this is Sabina at Cross Keys Crafts. I promised you a few Father's Day cards with um, the wood grain paper, wood effect paper I created in my last videos. I might actually post these on the same day so you don't have to wait to see what I use these for. And I'm starting with this one which is the Sizzix Tim Holtz embossing folder with the added ink on the top which gives this really really nice three-dimensional look. So I have decided to use this together with the visible image splash of whiskey stamps and I've got the coordinating dies. This will be for my future father-in-law for um, Father's Day so he likes whiskey so I thought this would be a nice theme. And I have already stamped and heat embossed these two images in black. I added the ice cube as well. And I also used this little stamp here to stamp the uh, whiskey in the glass. But this is only to give me an idea of where I have to colour it in. Um, I'm going to show you that in a moment how I do this. And the other thing I've done is there is this, funnily enough, this piece of wood in here. But at first I thought I heat embossed that in black as well, but I decided to just use clear embossing powder on craft cardstock. This is what this looks like. So I'm going to colour this in and I think this is going to be really a nice effect as well. So all I'm going to do with this is I'm going to use my elements, Livinia Stamps Element Sundance and the vintage photo that I used to colour that in. And I'm just putting a bit on this tile. You can use a stamping block or any sort of mat that you can use wet media on. And I'm just going to spray a bit of water onto this. And this creates some basically some watercolours that I can use to colour this in. Let me zoom in a little bit so you can see what I'm doing. And I'm not really paying attention to any shadows or anything. I'm just colouring this in a little bit. I'm just adding the yellow to give a bit of interest, not to have it all in one colour. And this stamp I had before, it. let me just show you this. It left this wide line and I want to keep that a little bit so I'm very cautious not to paint over that. So. I'm wiping up my brush. Oh, you can't see that. I was just doing that. Fun. I'm going to use my almost dry brush as well and just colour in the bottom because this will have some reflection from the whiskey it won't be completely clear and i might actually do this over the white line because it is a bit harsh so and i'm going to speed the video up for this now i'm going to do the same with the whiskey bottle i'm excluding the label i'll have a think about that in a moment but i can see here the line of the whiskey in the bottle which is funnily enough actually if you've already poured a bit of whiskey the line shouldn't be up there so I might have it a bit lower, but maybe I'm just being a bit um, too um, precise with that. So I'm going to speed this up now and just show you how I colour this in. So... I think this is enough. By the way, I'm not working on watercolour cardstock. This is just a heavyweight 300 GSM cardstock. So I am actually have got a few fibres that got a bit, um, like a little bit speckled, but I think that's okay. So I think I will just find a colour to colour this in and I, um, I'll be back in a sec. Okay, I decided to use this Lost Shadow. I haven't really used that before, but I think it might just give a nice little effect. I haven't cleaned my brush, so I will have a bit of residue there. And it is a bit opaque, but it might just be enough colour there to make this appear less white than it was before. So as before, I'm going to a bit darker on this side and then just 
go over here. Yeah, and I think this will be just enough. I go a bit on the cork, sorry, on the lid here. Take the edge of the white there. And that's all I'm doing to this. So you see, this is really, really um, simple to colour in. Because Visible Image, they do all the jobs for you. They've already got some shading here um, with, the, with the lines. So I'll just leave it at that. So all that's left for me to do now is to colour this in. So I think I'm coming back with my um, vintage photo. I will actually use a bit of that as well just because I've got the water there and again I think I'm just colouring this in very simple so I don't know how well you can see that obviously again this is not watercolour cardstock but it holds the water well so I'll leave this now to dry and, and I'm going to die cut these pieces and then I'll show you how I assemble the card. Okay, so I have cut my uh, card base. This is just from an A4 piece of card. So I've cut this in half at four inches and then I just scored it in the middle and folded it at the full length. This is a top folding card. I cut the um, piece of embossed cardstock accordingly this unfortunately i think this is an american size so it is a bit wide and i had to cut it down quite a bit on the side here but i think this will do and i'm not losing too much of the effect i also have off camera stamped this happy father's day a little tip for you i don't know if you can see this this is a bit speckled and so were these images because if you heat emboss with black embossing powder, you can sometimes get the embossing powder, sometimes it sprays and it just flies around, especially if you put it on the higher speed, your embossing tool, so your heat tool. You can avoid that by heat, sorry, by um, applying, sorry, by, by stamping in Versafine uh, the black ink and then heat embossing it in clear. I have done that in other videos. Today I thought I'm not too bothered. I love the grungy look sometimes of these stamps. So if this is a bit speckled, I don't really mind. And I have just simply cut this out with one of my nesting dies, which, which gives this stitched look. And it had quite a good size for this. At first I thought about using a Father's Day die. Let me just show you this. Which Ignore the Christmas tree there. But this would be too too big to actually fit onto the card and I didn't want it to be too busy. But um, I find this is a bit harsh um, against the whole sort of card. So I would like to ink this up a little bit. And I also decided that this against the background gets a bit lost. So I'm also inking this up as well now. So and all I'm doing for that is I'm just using my ink blending brushes and for this piece now I'm actually using my Lavinia Stamps Elements Truffle. This is a bit darker than the vintage photo so this will give a nicer effect and although I had painted it nicely once it dried it didn't have the effect I wanted. So you can also go around the edges a bit. You can also, if you wanted to have it even darker, you could use some black soot on the edges. But I just want a bit of definition. I want this to stand out a little bit from the background. So, and for the other piece, I'm starting with this one first, but I think I will add some yellow to that as well. Just want really just a hint of colour. I don't mind a bit of white, so I'm just starting on the edge here. I'm going over it very lightly, almost as, as if I'm cleaning my blending brush on this piece. I want a bit more yellow on the edge as if it's fading out. 
think I put a bit more on the top. I hope you can see what I'm doing. I'm not always sure if my camera picks it up as well. So I've got a bit of a, like an ombre look and that will just be nice enough to take the edge of the white. But I'm also using a bit of the yellow on this as well, just in the middle. Just to give it a richer tone. So and all that's left for me to do now is to glue these things down. It really depends on your preference, whether you're going to send the card in the post, you might want to keep it flat. I will just glue this down with my quick grab glue on the background and then I think I will pop these up on foam pads. So just bear with me whilst I get those. So I've got my foam pads ready. I've also glued this down already and I've inserted or glued down a white panel on the inside as well, which will strengthen my cardstock because my cardstock's not very thick. Be very generous when you glue down embossed papers because they naturally want to pop off in certain areas. So you need to uh, put quite a bit of glue on the back. I used my Cosmic Shimmer Quick Grab Glue. I find this is the best one for the job. So with the uh, bottle and the glass and this panel here, because I know I want these to be on the same height or the same thickness, and I want these to sit like on this board, I'm going to glue these down first onto the board, and then I can put the um, pads on the whole of this back. So I'm just setting this down like this, pressing it down, Doing the same with the glass. I'm sorry, I hope I'm not going off camera there. So, I'm a stickler for symmetry, so I'll make sure I've got it in the same sort of space that I have on that side. It doesn't have to be. So now I can turn the whole panel around and can, can put these on the back. These are really, really cheap um, foam pads. And I've noticed in the past that I, if I had a card here in my display for a bit longer, I had the, the situation the other week where actually these foam pads came off. So I'm going to glue these down with some extra glue just to be on the safe side. Oh, this one, see, the other thing is as well, you can move them whilst I've still got the wet glue on them. So I'm covering this all over. I'm going to cut a piece for this one. And then I'm going to take the release paper off and I'm putting some more glue on the top because I really want these to stick for more than just a few days. So I've got my glue on the back here as well. So all I need to do now is just to set it down Once I've got it in the right place, I can press it down. And now I'm going to do the same with this one here. I will actually put the glue on the back of this one here first, so I don't forget to put it behind the foam tab pads, which is easy to do. I can peel this off. And stick this down as well. So. Oh, and that wasn't intended. Good thing is, because I've got the wet glue on there, I can remove it. And I think I might get away without having too much stickiness on there. If you ever got um, glue on a piece of cardstock and it doesn't show it's just sticky, you can use your anti-static powder tool just to get rid of the stickiness, just wipe over it. So I was just hovering this over there to find the right balance. So I think that's the good place there. Yeah, and I think, yeah, you can't see this there. Yeah. I think this is a really nice card. Quite simple to make actually. It doesn't take that long. 
and yeah could even be mass produced if you need a few more father's day cards if you sell cards so yeah i'm really really pleased with this one i'm going to make another card now because i promised you more than one father's day card so give me a, a quick moment to tidy up my desk and then i come back for my second card, I'm using the wood effect that I just created with the Selvage Patina and Vintage Photo uh, ink pad. And I just went across the piece of paper. I actually redid this because I needed slightly longer pieces and I obviously had stopped here and only started there. So, but I'd used the same technique. And from this paper, I cut two strips these are six inches by one inch. I have cut two pieces that are one inch by one and a half. But I'll show you in a moment. It's up to you what length you have here. It depends on which gap you would like to have here. But what I didn't mention is I'm going to um, create a crate for the tools. I'm uh, die cut. I'll show you those in a moment. So, and then I need for the back of the crate, I need a piece. This is three inches and then the same height that you decide on here. So, mine is again is one and a half inches wide. And then I have cut with my honeycomb nesting dies, I have cut myself a handle for the top. I will cut this off here and this is actually cut a bit because um, the cardstock piece of cardstock wasn't as wide as the die but I wanted this sort of handle shape so I will cut this down. For the tools that you can already see here already assembled I use these dies. These are from Printable Heaven and I think I've shown these in a haul. If you've never done paper piecing before just to explain quickly what I've done here. I have cut these dies from black cardstock and I've also cut these from silver, but the silver is actually not cardstock. This was just an envelope and I quite like this sort of metallic look that is not really shiny. And what I have done, um, I have the, the silver pieces, I have cut them apart like this was obviously one piece in silver. I've cut it apart and I've glued the silver onto the black piece of cardstock. So it's all black in the back. And what I've also done, you can see this here, I've got a piece of tape here and this is holding these pieces in. If you wanted to, you could replace these as well and put silver back in. But I decided to keep these black. So I've done the same with this um, here. Just cut the silver off glued it onto the black piece. Same here and again I've kept these little pieces in with the tape. By the way the thicker the cardstock the more likely they're going to stay in. With the silver they came out straight away. With this one I have actually because the black cardstock had fallen out I have actually put the silver piece just in and um, glued this on because um, the, the knife actually in a, a crafting knife or cutting knife like this is actually inlaid. So I quite like the effect of this. So um, I've already prepared this. I used my collar glue to glue these on because you've got a bit of wiggle room and I left these to dry. So I think these look really nice. And also these tools determined the size of my crate and the size of my card. I didn't want the crate to be too big. This, by the way, is inspired by a video by Sam Calcott. I'm going to link to that below. She created a crate for beer bottles, and but she hers is much bigger. The different um, measurements than mine. As I said, I wanted mine to keep mine small. So these strips now you need to score these. So I've got my scoreboard here. So. I haven't unfolded it, I'm just leaving it double as it is. So you need to score these at a half and at one and a half. And then you just flip it around and you do this again. Half and one and a half. 
doing the same with this one. As you can see, I actually had used the, the back of the cardstock I created earlier. So half, one and a half, half, one and a half. And all these are going to be mountain folds. So it's very simple, this card. And it's supposed to be a pop-up card. I hope it works as I've got it in my head. So these are these pieces. If you bothered, obviously you can ink them up from the back. I'm not too bothered. This will go at the bottom, so this will almost disappear. And these two pieces have the um, longer side facing upwards. And you need to score these in the middle, so this is at a half again. These will be the corner pieces. So that's all we need to score. So again, these will be folded. Just using a bone for just a little bit on these pieces. You can already see it's not right in the middle, but it doesn't matter for this cut. So, and I'm also burnishing these because I want this to fold nicely. So um, I'm just thinking which way around I'm going to do this. I think I will align these on my back piece because then I know that this uh, gap is the right thing. What I'm going to do is I'm going to glue the tabs behind this piece because then they will completely disappear. So I will glue this here and then the other tab I will just glue on the other side. And I'm doing the same with this one. And if I have measured correctly, I should have a little gap, which I haven't. Why is that? It doesn't matter. I'll tell you what I'll do. I might just take them a little bit apart. I have got a little gap, but it's tiny. Oh, yeah, I have got a gap. I thought I measured wrong. So, but that if you want this gap to be bigger, um, if you've got bigger items in your crate, you um, can make this taller and then the same with the corner pieces. So I'm going to glue these down on either side and then I'm going to show you how to put the corner pieces on. I just realised I actually have to show you this step because um, you want this to fold properly. So I've glued this on here. I'm using my quick grab glue again. But you want to make sure when you glue this down that this is aligned with a back piece and then to glue this down you lay this flat you put the glue on here and then you just fold it here on this score line just back like that and this way you ensure that this will fold flat on the card later so the same again here might have a bit too much glue there. So, popping it on there. So again, I'm aligning this. So I need to move this up. You can turn it around just to make sure it's aligned properly and not wonky. And then glue on this side. And I'm folding this over again and again, just making sure it is straight. Okay, I'm leaving this to dry for a moment and then I'll show you how to put on the corner pieces. So the corner pieces are rather straightforward. You just put glue on the corner or you can actually put it on this, even if you've got a bit of glue in the middle, it doesn't really matter. So, 
can use if you want to you can use the um collar glue i've got this one handy now so they just sit on the corner you can make sure you've got the gap you want there but also make sure these fold nicely as well because you want a bit of give there Make sure again I've burnished these properly. So they give a bit of structure at the same time, but they also must fold down a little bit, otherwise you don't have this pop-up effect. So I'm bending it in the other direction. So make sure they're pushed against the um, score line of the pass. So, <coughs> oh, pardon me. What I had forgotten um, when I sort of recreated this design is I need something in the middle to hold the tools. So we need another strip that is, let me just think, five inches wide, I think. We need three inches, no four inches will actually do because this is only half an inch. So I'm going to cut this quickly. So I'm going to have a four inch strip and I'm going to score half on either side. So I've got my four inch strip and I've scored half an inch on either side. So I've got this here now. And before I insert this, I'm going to cut down my handle. So my idea is just to have a bit of the handle there. So I'm just snipping it on there. Just eyeballing this because it will disappear anyway. I'm just cutting this off here. And then I can just add this here. So I'm just gluing this on. Making sure it's even on either side. So as I said before, if you're bothered about what it looks like behind, make sure you ink it up properly. This was just a scrap piece. I might actually do that myself. This might be visible. Just using my vintage photo, I'm not bothering about the patina there, just to give it a bit of colour. So I can now insert this, just checking which this is the front, obviously. And I've got this one, the inked up at the top. And all I'm doing is now I'm going to put some glue on either side. And I'm just popping it. Ideally, I would have done that before I glued the back on, but I just simply forgot. So I'm sitting this now in here. Again, it's up to you actually how high or low you want it, but ideally, I have it on the same level as the top. Um, top bit here because then it doesn't peep through the hole there. And all I'm doing is is I'm resting it against the back because then I will have the same distance between the front and the back. I hope you can see what I'm doing. So and again, I'm just checking that it actually folds down. So I'm pressing it this way and I'm pressing it that way. And this one now gives me a funny, funny angle. See what I've done there. So have a look if I can peel that off again. If not, it doesn't matter because I know who I'm giving this to. This will be for my fiancé from my cat. My cat sends greeting cards. So I might just leave it. So it might actually be an idea. Don't do what I did. I will put a disclaimer in. Don't have it as a corner piece. 
have just one strip here and one strip here, just half an inch wide. So I regret not gluing this on. I think some Calicut had corner pieces, but maybe she had thinner cardstock. But yeah, I can't remedy this now unless I cut it open, so I'll leave it like this. So what's left to do for me is now to insert these tools. So I think I will actually have some in the front and some sort of peeping out. I think the ones that are obvious what they are, I can make them sort of disappear in here. And some I think I will have sitting in the front and one some I glue on this middle piece. I might even have some on the back. But I've also got a little idea um, because this will be the card from my cat, what else I'm going to put in there. So I shall put these, um, glue these down now and then I'll show you what I've done with this. So I have adhered all my tools. So some of them I have put on the back. I just put glue where I needed it. Some I have put on the middle panel. Um, sorry, just that one actually. And these I glued onto the front. So I put glue on the front of the tools and put them against this piece. And as you can see, I also added some cats in the toolbox. The proportions aren't quite right, but it doesn't really matter for this card. So in the meantime, I have also cut my card base. I decided for a top folding card. This is six by four inches cut from an A4 piece of cardstock. So um, with this uh, toolbox, because it is rather small, it doesn't really matter where I put it down as long as it doesn't overlap on this side or on this side. So when I fold it down and I just realized this is not so much of a drama because if I just fold it this way, it's fine. As long as I don't try to fold it that way, it's it's perfect. So I want to make sure that I don't go um, off the card here, but I think I will just glue it down in the middle. And then I have also die cut my sentiment. By the way, I will link to these um, sentiment die cuts. Sorry, the sentiment dies below. I think these are really great. There are three sets and you've got basically dies for all occasions. And I cut this in white and in black. And I'm going to glue these together, offsetting them a little bit. And I think I will just pop it on the top here. Obviously, I could put this further to the side here, as long as I don't go over there and pop this here. But I'm not quite sure yet, because when it opens, yeah, I think that it could be quite nice as well. But then I find this a little bit bare, unless I add another cat there. I'll have a little think, and I'm just going to show you the card in a moment. So I went for the middle in the end. I do like my card symmetrical. So I just pop this down now here. And yeah, it's fold sideways. So this will fit into a four by six envelope and can set it up like this and display it. Yeah, I think this looks really nice. Um, if you like these cards, oh, by the way, that was the first one. If you like these cards, you might want to give me a thumbs up. And if you would like to see more of what I'm creating, you might want to subscribe to my channel. I'd be very happy about that. And I'll see you soon with another video.